And now we're going to talk about free motion quilting. One of my most favorite things to do. When I first started quilting, I was absolutely terrified of free motion. And then I took a quilting course with my eight-year-old daughter, and she just excelled at free motion. Probably because she had never sewn before, so for her it was quite easy to do. Free motion is like doodling. Instead of doodling with a pen, you're doodling with your sewing machine. Now, with the Move It foot and the Walking Foot, I had to put an adapter. Because these are high shank machines. So the one that you get in the kit, as you can see, where the screw goes in, is actually much lower than the one that came with this machine. So instead of using the adapter that I had to use for the walking foot, I'm going to use this free motion foot. It's an O foot. It has an open toe. So let's go ahead and put this on. Now, there are a couple of different ways of doing free motion. <clears throat> Some people say feed dogs down. Some people say feed dogs up. If your feed dogs are up, you have your stitch length at zero. With some machines, once you engage the free motion foot, the feed dog screw down, you need to experiment with your machine and find out what works best. And once you do that, you're going to write on your sample piece here what you need to do for free motion. So when you're free motioning, you, instead of using the pen to move around, you're actually using this. This is your pen, but you have to move your fabric in order to do it. And what it does, it takes time to get good at it. Because as you move your fabric, you're making the stitch. So the stitch could be long if you move it really fast, or really, really small if you're moving it too slow. The best advice I can give you for free motion is that you make a bunch of these 8 by 8 squares, a minor sandwich, have blue on the bottom, orange on the top, and you'll practice at least 20 minutes a day. Another good way to get exceptionally good at free motion is to go buy yourself a drawing book and doodle for half an hour each day. So half an hour of doodling or free motion at your machine can be worth up to two hours of actual free motion. So let's set up our machine to do some free motion. On my first try here, I'm actually going to set my stitch length at zero and leave my feed dogs up. So stitch length, I'm going to go down. And the lowest I can go is 0.2. I have left my feed dogs up. So to start, we're going to do needle down needle up and that pulls my bobbin thread out and this is what you always want to have a pair of tweezers for is to pull your bobbin thread especially if you're using the thread cutter then you can pull it this is what long armors use to start quilting right so I have my top and my bottom there I'm going to hold those and I'm actually going to stitch right there so it actually knots it. One, two, three, four. Now I'm ready to move. I'm going to be moving my fabric. And it's a combination of speed and moving your hands that will make your free motion. So we take a quick look at this. So I'm actually making the stitch length. The machine isn't, because I'm moving the fabric. So you'll see a small stitch here and a bigger stitch here. And then going around corners. So let me just finish this off and I'm going to turn it over. So I'm there, I'm at my end. Needle up. This is what I do. So I grab my top thread, 
foot down and I'm actually bringing up my bobbin thread. Because when you're quilting, you typically want your threads on top. If you have them on the bottom, they can get caught. So let's turn this over. Ah, perfect. I have eyelashes, so this is exactly what we want. Eyelashes. That's because I turned too fast. I did not give the machine enough time to make the stitch. So if you have eyelashes on the bottom, it's tell, telling you that you're moving your fabric far too fast. As you can see, some of my beginning ones is a bit better. So let's increase my speed a bit. Put down, needle down, needle up, pull up your bobbin thread. Put it off to the side. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna go a little faster, make, make it a little smaller. What I'm doing is called a stipple or a meander. It's usually the first quilting stitch that quilters will learn. Because really, it's just loops, circles. And yes, you can cross over your stitching. Remember, there's no quilt police here. I'm just going to head and cut those threads. Not as bad, but I still have a bit here, a little bit of eyelashes. But you can see where I sped up a bit was getting much better. So every machine is different. It's called practice, practice, practice. So this is the one I actually did on the Luminaire. Of course, you always have to write your name. So let's look at the bottom here. Not too many eyelashes. Looks pretty darn good. And that's playing with the tension, making sure I have the appropriate thread in. So I have embroidery thread on the top, which is a 40 weight, and I have an 80 weight in my bobbin. And some machines, you may have a special bobbin case for free motion so that you don't get any spinning of your bobbin. This machine actually comes with a special bobbin case to do fancy work with. So free motion is practice, practice, practice. Buy yourself a drying pad and practice every night just doodling and then go to the machine and try to doodle on here.